Texas Politics Code Edition, Brandon Rotten House, Texas Governor 2306, El Paso Community College Custom Edition. Chapter one, the struggle for Texas demographic culture and political power. Ben Franklin said the only two certainties in life and death and taxes, Governor Greg Abbott reminded Texans in his state of the address in 2017, and then added, as far as I'm concerned, the only good tax is a dead tax. And yet, even though the governor doesn't like taxes, Texans still have to pay them. Why? What do state and local governments do with our taxes, and why does it matter? Governments may seem to be disconnected from our everyday lives and are unnecessary expensive, but we don't have to leave our homes to feel the consequences of their policies. One day in early 2020, for example, 13-year-old Scott Neese came face to face with a 400-pound wild hog that was riding with the cattle feed on a ranch in Colorado County, Texas. Neese shot the beast with his AR-15. Far from an isolated incident, the hog apocalypse is not only a physical threat, but it also costs Texans $52 million annually in damages to agriculture alone. Cities hire private contractors to trap pigs while county governments organize annual hog hunting contests. As a result, the state government allows people to hunt feral hogs, even from helicopters and hot air balloons. In 2016, most of the residents of Nordheim, Texas, population of 316, descended on Austin wearing yellow. Concerned about pollution, t-shirts, the residents were there to protest the state's decision to, local, to locate a 14.3 acre waste material facility on, in their community. Texas Railroad Commission experts had decided that facility would not pollute the town's groundwater, but exasperate 80-year-old resident Kermit Kohler told reporters, that's what you call a little getting a S on. All the same construction of the facility was completed in early 2019. Texas energy industry employs tens of thousands of workers, some of whom are undocumented. Undocumented workers are more vulnerable to wage fraud, but not all of them keep silent. For example, when 41-year-old Guillermo Perez's boss told him that he didn't have to pay $1,200 to him, Perez took action. I told him that I'm going to Texas Workforce Commission, which I did. Then after that, he came back two weeks later and paid me. These anecdotes of wild hogs, the residents of Norheim and Perez show how ordinary Texans as individuals and as groups have re reacted to and shaped Texas politics. Their values, visions, and goals often clash. However, and so Texas public policies and even the structure of its institutions and the way they operate are often the outcome of conflict. In this chapter, we explore the interactions among the communities of the natives, settlers, and immigrants we discover who wins and who loses. We examine how the booms and busts in the Texas economy and shifting demographics impacts the politics of who gets what, when and how. Finally, we examine political culture to see how Texans relate to government and politics. In doing so, we will witness the great battles that have sculpted the face of Texas today. 1.1, the origins of Texas. Power in Texas politics has been shaped by the people who settled and inhabited the state. Immigration is not a new political issue. Conflicts over territory and resources have transformed Texas for millennia. So it is to this topic that we turn first, Native Americans. Flint for knives and arrows drew Native Americans into the lands of Texas. More than 10,000 years before the arrival of Europeans in the early 16th century, 
Tribes in North America competed for land and violently displaced each other <laughs> into new territory, eventually settling in lands throughout Texas. See figure 1.1. The Caddo and Apache Indians, descendants of the first people to walk into North America, arrived early on. The Caddo enjoyed a more sedentary life because the region they lived in had plentiful game and favorable conditions for growing crops. The settlement of Caddo Indians, primarily farmers, extended from the Trinity River to the Red River and as far east as the Ap Mississippi. The Apache splintered by pressure from the tribes, pushed farther south and west into the area around Big Bend. Almost exclusively nomadic, they lived completely off the roaming buffalo. The Karakoa and Kahilitikin people settled along the coast coastal prairies and bushy plains of South Texas beginning around the 17th century. Disease and conflict with newly arriving Spanish and French settlers greatly diminished the numbers of Native Americans by the 1860s. The Comanche, Wichita, and Kiowa Indians migrated from the western United States on horseback in the 18th century, fleeing other warring groups and tracking bison herds. The name Texas derives from a Spanish word that means friendly or ally, ally, the term attributed to native populations by Spanish explorers. However, many native tribes resisted Spanish attempts to integrate them into Spanish missions and convert them to Christianity. The Caddo, for example, preferred to live in small clusters along fertile river valleys. They resented the unwillingness to, of the Spanish to supply them with the firearms and bristled at the outrages committed by Spanish soldiers, including the molestation of the Caddo women. Followed, following pitched battles, the Spanish burned native villages and seized Caddo to serve as guides. Conflicts erupted further when Anglos, white settlers from the United States, streamed into Texas. Sam Houston, nicknamed Big Drunk, by the leaders of the Cherokee tribe where he lived with as a young man, tried to make peace and prevent Europeans from encroaching on Indian lands. Houston negotiated a treaty in 1836 that recognized Cherokee lands claims in exchange for a pledge of neutrality during the Texas Revolution. <clears throat> in the early days of the Republic, However, President Marabou B. Lamar relocated Native Americans to reservations today. Only three reservations remain in Texas, home to the Alabama, Chichuta, Tiga, and Kickapoo, Spanish settlers. Searching for treasure, the legendary fountain of youth, and the fabled land of warlike Amazon women, Spanish explorers pursued romantic dreams in America. In November 1528, the Karenku near Galveston Island encountered a shocking apparition, a starving haggard, haggard and half-naked stranger. The man was a Spanish explorer, Alvaro Nunez Gabaza de Vaca, whom the Karenku rescued along with 80 survivors of his sunken ship. In the 1530s and 1540s, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado and Luis de Mascascaso Alvarado explored North and East Texas. Over the next two centuries, the Spanish established missions and mil military outposts. The mission system in Texas operated as the political arm of New Spain, which occupied what is now Mexico and southern Texas. The expansion into Texas protected the interior of New Spain against the French settlers in Louisiana. Glory, God, and gold was the phrase that summarized the Spanish colonists. Approach to settlement, they established more than 50 missions and presidios, 
garrison to guard the missions in the area between 1680 and 1740, burdened with an economic downturn and rising debts from wars. In Europe and South America, Spain increased taxes and cut expenses in its colonies. Resentment of autocratic Spanish rule, rigid class distinction, and slavery prompted a revolutionary movement in New Spain. After a series of small revolts, New Spain, now known as the United Mexican States or Mexico, won its independence from Spain in 1821. Tejanos, in 1821, Tejanos, Mexican Texans, worked primarily in and around the ranching communities that had sprung up near military outposts along the northern frontier of Mexico. Serving as a buffer province, New Spain, Tejanos spread from what is now South Texas to the north to settle regions important for frontier defense. Tejanos had a profound effect on other settlers by transforming their lifestyle from agrarian to ranching and their cultural, from moccasin and coonskin caps to boots and cowboy hats. Tejanos resisted centralized authority and embraced a young cimentio, a form of local self-government. The Tejanos shaped local laws in Texas before revolution and imbued the settlement with a desire for autonomy that planted the seed for of independence well before many Anglos arrived. After the Texas Revolution, Tejanos, who were in Texas in 1836 and did not aid Mexico, were eligible for a league of labor, 25 square miles and 177 acres. However, they also found themselves a minority in their native land, and many lost family land to the Anglo Raiders. Anglos, after gaining independence from Spain, Mexico sought to use Texas as a source of economic revenue, levying taxes on land, rapid westward expansion of the land Hungary. United States in the early 1800s threatened Spanish control over Texas. By the 1820s, however, the Mexican government aggressively promoted Anglo settlement of Texas. As we will see in chapter two, in order to promote commerce, spread religion, and provide a buffer against attacks by hostile Native Americans, Mexico Inc. deals with impresarios, individuals granted the right to help settle a new land and recruit new settlers who then orchestrated a, the settlement of American citizens in Texas. Some settlers were fugitives on the run or wandering adventurers. Most, however, were subsidence farming, farmers moving to Texas for cheap land and abundant space to support themselves and their families. Tejano soon began to view Anglo Im immigrants with hostility as competitors for land and valuable resources. Friction between Anglo settlers and Tejanos erupted almost immediately cultured Mexican aristocrats like Martin de Leon were openly scornful of the Anglo riff graph streaming in, Ang streaming in. Anglo impresarios like Green DeWitt from Victoria often turned a blind eye when Anglos of their Settlements smuggled in contraband tobacco and guns or stole livestock from Tejano ranchers. Indeed, when De Leon traveled to Victoria swearing to return with DeWitt's head, Stephen F. Austin quietly intervened to avert armed conflict, but ethnic tensions remained. Laws decreed in 1830 to stop immigrant into Texas to, and declare impresario contracts void spurred Anglo illegal immigration. Rising tariff rates fanned the flames of rebellion and eventually both Anglos and Tejanos demanded independence for Texas, which was then part of Mexican state 
of Cohia y Tejas. Following the Texas Revolution, however, relations between Anglos and Tejanos soared. War heroes from the Revolution and many of the original impresarios took over the reins of power, leaving Tejanos without direct representation in the newly formed Texas government. Angles of Power The Benefits of Challenges of Diversity Texas Authority Excuse me Texas author Mary Laswell famously said I am forced to conclude that God made Texas on his day off for pure entertainment just to prove that all the diversity could be crammed into one section of the earth this diversity sometimes comes with high cost. In 2019, a 21-year-old Plano senior, senior high school graduate drove hundreds of miles to Walmart a few miles east of Eastwood High School in El Paso to kill as many Mexicans as possible. He killed 23 people and injured 25 others. 12 days later, Plano Independent School District, PISD, canceled the football game that was to take place between the two teams for security reasons, security concerns. Texans in El Paso and Plano and elsewhere were outraged. Longtime sports anchor Dale Hansen blasted the decision saying, when we cancel games because we are afraid to live, the bad guys win. PISD quickly reversed its decision. The players from Eastwood arrived in North Texas where Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones welcomed them and local restaurants treated them to free meals wearing El Paso Strong t-shirts. Some attended the Planers Senior High's pep rally in a display of unity. The members of both teams interspersed to stand shoulder to shoulder as the Star Spangled Banner played before the players took Gridian. Gridaran. African Americans. By 1823, Mexico had banned slavery, but in 1829, Anglo settlers brought African American enslaved persons with them under the guise of contract labor. At the time of the revolution in 1836, about 5,000 Americans resided in Texas. By 1847, after Texas gained its independence from Mexico and subsequently joined the United States, the number had risen to 38,750. The expansion of agriculture as an economic force prompted many settlers to import or purchase enslaved persons. In the years before the Civil War, African Americans faced harsh slave codes that severely restricted their education. Travel, public meetings, and possession of weapons, the Civil War, and Reconstruction brought the promise of freedom. But the Black Codes passed by the legislature and several cities restricted their access to public facilities and largely relegated African Americans to rural areas to, for work as agricultural laborers. Economic crisis following Civil War did a little to provide independence to emancipated slaves. Policies of land redistribution, often referred to as 40 acres and mule, initially offered African Americans economic opportunity. By the 1890s, most African Americans worked as tenant farmers on farmer, former plantations during this period, many African Americans moved from the state's rural state areas to major urban areas, such as Dallas, Austin, Houston, and San Antonio. On the outskirts of the city, they established Freedmen's Towns, which became, and often continue to be, the heart of an African American community. City schools, public transportation, and other facilities remained segregated for over a century after the war. Texas takeaways, 1.1.1, who settled Texas and why? 1.1.2, why did the Texans rebel against Mexico? 
1.2, Continuing Unity and Change in the Tax Economy. If Texas were an independent nation, its economy would rank 10th in the world. Texas is home to six of the top 50 companies in the Fortune 500 list. Its 2019 gross state, the sum of all goods and services produced in a state, topped $1.8 trillion, the second highest in the United States. Although natural resources and high energy production are still major economic assets, a balanced and diverse set of industries, including real, real estate, manufacturing, and technology have contributed to Texas economic success. Until the 1980s, the Texas economy was heavily dependent on natural resources, especially oil and gas and agriculture. Many Texans got so rich so quickly in the oil boom of the 1970s that they were called the big rich. Better Nouveau than Never was the rallying cry as they donned lynx fur coats and 17 karat diamonds to, at, to arrive at the grocery store in white Rolls Royces. However, when the price of oil dropped 24% between 1981 and 1986, personal bankruptcies, large oil manufacturers, layoffs, and bank foreclosures rippled through the teetering Texas economy. Texas responded by promoting economic diversity. The Texas economy today relies on a mix of agriculture and ranching, oil, and natural gas, military and defense, information technology, electric power, and manufacturing. See figure 1.2. It now has a balanced system, so that soaring in one sector like a drastic drop in oil prices will not topple the whole community, or whole economy. Food and fiber. In antebellum Texas, three quarters of all families drew their living from the state's plentiful farmland. Agriculture interests dominated the politics of the day. Settlers spread across Texas, planting new crops, corn in the east, sorghum in the west, wheat in the northern high plains, citrus in south Texas, and rice in the coastal prairies. However, king cotton was the most prominent crop. Slave-owning planters produced 90% of all cotton grown in the state until the Civil War. Since the early 1900s, Texas had been leading cotton producer state in the nation. Timber production located in the defense in the dense forests of East Texas also played a major role in the state's economy. Between 1880 and 1910, in the 1920s, the price of lumber fell dramatically, hurting many Texas farm families and putting the lumber industry in tenterhooks. The industry did not recover until World War II as wartime demand, forced prices higher, and mechanization made farming more productive. After World War II, large commercial farms eclipsed small family homesteads. The farm population dropped from 1.52 million to about 245,000 between 1945 and 1990. Today, Texas leads the nation in the production of several agri agricultural staples generates more than 115 billion dollars annually and ranks fourth overall in the value of agricultural cash receipts receipts fuel it roared i'm telling you it roared exclaimed a beaumont resident upon hearing a particularly massive oil gusher in southwest texas the discovery of, major, of a major oil deposit between the marshy soil at Spindle Top Hill in Beaumont, Texas in 1901 ushered in a new economic era and one that continues to drive the state's financial booms and busts. Despite the state's current more balanced economy, by 1940, Texas was the leading oil producing state in the United States and would soon be central to the war effort. 
the new industry also expanded state government. The discovery of East Texas field by Columbus Marion Dad Joyner in 1930 near Kilgore prompted the newly created Texas Railroad Commission to limit plumping, pumping and production. The commission continues to regulate the industry today. Today's Texas energy industry is a leader, not just in the state, but in the world. Texas is currently home to several major energy companies, Conoco Phillips, Marathon Oil, Exxon Oil, Exxon Mobil, Tesoro, Valero, Total, and Shell, as well as 5,000 other energy related companies. Energy firms in the state also lead to in alternative energy resources, including wind, solar, and biomass, animal and vegetable material converted to energy. Because of the rebounding oil prices, oil and gas revenues amounted to about 3% of all state revenue in 2018, topping $3 billion, up 60% from 2017. King Cattle and other four-legged friends. As the nation gained an appetite for Texas beef in the 1860s, cowboy began driving their herds north to reach market hubs in Kansas and Colorado. Cattle ranchers, both the enormous and the modest ones, sprang up all over Texas in, 18, in the 1870s. Barbed wire, once called the devil's hat band, brought to controversy, bloodshed, and ultimately civilization to the harsh Texas frontier. Cheap to produce and easy to string, the wire was used by ranchers to fence their property and the open range was gone. By 1890, barbed wire, a shift to corporate ownership practices, like paying the ranch hands wages instead of the cattle. Drought and better access to rail lines ended cattle drives, although cattle no longer run freely today. Texas leads the nation in the production of cattle, sheep, and goats, which generates annual cash receipts of more than $12 billion. After World War II, Texas experienced, by the way, manufacturing. After World War II, Texas experience rapid industrial growth doubling the number of manufacturing facilities in the period from 1930 to 1947. Wartime industries ballooned throughout Texas, steel mills in Houston, tin smelting in Texas City, aircraft factories in Garland, Grand Prairie, and Fort Worth, shipyards along the coast, and revitalized paper and wood pulp in East Texas. Today, manufacturing amounts to approximately 13% of the state's gross, gross domestic product, and the number of manufacturing jobs in Texas ranks, second to only to California. Military and Defense Industries Texas has been home to an active military presence since World War II, when it served as the largest training ground in the world for soldiers and sailors. Texas currently has 15 military bases with all branches of the armed services represented except for the Marines and Coast Guard. These posts are spread across the state but are concentrated in and around San Antonio. See figure 1.3. Defense contracting, a business that provides products or services to the military, is also a major part of the Texas economy especially as a significant employer, major corporations such as Lockheed, Mar Martin, Boeing, KBR, formerly Kellogg at Brown and Root, a Halliburton subsidiary, DXC Technology, formerly Ross Perot's Electronic Data Systems, and many other furnished aircraft weapons and technical know-how to support the U.S. military. 
high tech. As early as the mid 19th century, technology has sparked growth in Texas H. Ross Pro left IBM in 1962 to form electronic data systems, which de designed computer systems for Medicare and Medicaid. Technology went from rich to big rich in the 1980s when Rod Canyon formed Compaq and Technograd. Michael Dell founded the Dell Computers at the age of 23 in his dorm room at the University of Texas, the tech boom, which extends to information technology, financial services, healthcare technology, and aeronautics continues today. Several major national corporations are headquartered in Texas, including Dell Texas Instruments, Perot Systems, and Hewlett Packard. In addition, thousands of smaller startup technology companies have sprouted in Texas, many in the Silicon Hills, in and around Austin. Healthcare. The healthcare industry is among the fastest growing industries in the state of Texas. <coughs> Both, and Texas boasts some of the largest hospitals and health systems in the country. The Texas Medical Center in Houston is the largest medical center in the world. The industry itself not only has a significant economic impact but also brings in millions of dollars in grants for medical innovation. Recreation and retirement. Stroll along the Riverwalk in San Antonio or the beaches of South Padre Island. Hike in Big Bend National Park, glaze the incredible art in Houston, many museums. The state is teeming with recreational and entertainment options and tourists flock to the state for leisure activities. Although many rural Texas counties have lost main state industries such as oil and gas production and agriculture, many still find that they are positioned for growth in recreation and as heaven, as a haven for retirees. Among these local resources are tourism, hunting and fishing, birding and retirement communities. Travel spending in Texas for events like South by Southwest, the Texas Motor Speedway, or the International Great Goat Cook-Off in Brady, Texas. Tops $80 billion and supports almost 700,000 jobs. <clears throat> Assessing the Texas economy. Bumper stickers in Texas following economic downturn ask for salvation. Please, God, give me one more oil boom this time. I promise not to piss it away. Although the state has minimized its dependency on oil and gas, its economic fortunes are still linked to these natural resources. Known as the Texas miracle, the economy has found itself riding a massive gusher during and after 2001 to 2008 oil boom as the price of the barrel climbed $140 strong. Strong job creation in diverse sector, sectors like technology and healthcare, demand for new housing and strong construction numbers, and relatively high oil prices kept Texas in a high cotton and able to shake off most shocks through 2020. Critics of the Texas Miracle point out that nearly all of the boom was concentrated in only four metropolitan areas, Houston, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio. Meanwhile, the number of low-skilled, low-paying positions jumped, prompting some to claim that MIG jobs had created an illusion of growth, median family income, what has not increased much since then, in part because population has provided a steady supply of new workers to keep salaries low. <clears throat> Critics also point out that large share of Texans live, both of, live below the poverty line. The gap between the rich and the poor is huge. In 2018, the richest 1% of households earned an average of over $1,343,897 per year. 
roughly 24 times greater than the rest of the family in the state who earned an average income of 55614 and much higher than the bottom 20% earning 22800 per year. Urban areas have particularly high rates of inequality, race and factor two. Poverty rates for African Americans and Hispanics are three times higher than those for Anglos and Hispanics earns approximately 75% of what Anglos make. Latinas make only 44 cents for every dollar made by non-Hispanic men. On the positive side, Texas energy companies with their increased wind energy output, along with its manufacturing, aviation, aerospace, defense, and biotechnology industries have expanded Austin ranks first in the concentrated concentration of startups, and San Antonio is a cyberspace hub with 140 firms in the city. <coughs> the state's proximity to border the to to the border encourages trade, immigration to fuel population growth and job creation. In fact, border protection itself has a, been a boon to the Rio Grande Valley in terms of jobs, investment and infrastructure, and sales tax revenues. Then the COVID-19 virus came. Stay-at-home orders decreased the demand for oil and coincided with international trade war for oil driving prices down. A spike in unemployment across several industries especially service and, re and retail jobs. Chop blocked the Texas economy, trickling down to the manufacturing, tourism, and education. By April 2020, the state's unemployment figures shot up and double digits, the highest in history, and retailers lost billions of dollars in sales tax revenue. The impact cr cratered state, county, and city budgets from El Paso to Beaumont and Harlingen and te to Texline. Texas is still struggling with the economic fallout from the pandemic. 1.3, continue, continuity and change in Texas demographics. Power and politics are in Texas are hug the arc of demographic shifts. As the state has become more urban and industrialized, citizens have required additional government services, driver's license, garbage pickup, and water and sewer systems. As foreign-born populations have grown, the state is confronting new demands for social services and access to schools. As the state has aged, Debates are erupting about health care and pensions. Political power, meanwhile, has shifted from the rural to urban to suburban communities with the movement of high-income ecolons of Texas society to those areas. These demographic shifts have re re repercussions for Texas politics. State population and growth. Since achieving statehood, Texas has grown rapidly. Once a lonely, inhospitable frontier fought with, fraught with danger, it has emerged as a major population center. The state's population was a mere 212,592 in 1850, but ballooned to more than 29 million by 2020. In every census taken, since 1850, Texas has grown faster than the United States as a whole. Population growth and economic expansion have often gone hand in hand in Texas. As first, land, then oil, and finally, industries drew newcomers. Texas today is the fastest growing and the largest states in the United States. See figure 1.4. As baby boomers, these born between 1946 and 1964, retire and move to the Sun Belt. 
and as jobs moved from the industrial northeast and midwest to the south, and with population growth comes greater sway in the presidential elections, more seats in Congress, and more power on the national level. Urbanization. The population has not increased uniformly across the state. Much of the growth has occurred in major urban areas. In 1890, Texas had no urban areas with a population more than 40,000. But by 1924, cities, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio, boasted more than 100,000 residents each. Rural populations have declined, and urban, especially suburban, populations have skyrocketed. The mechanization of farm labor and job opportunities in the urban areas led people to flock to cities between 1900 and 1920. This migration continues today and has amplified in recent years. See Table 1.1. Yet over half of the state's counties, most of them rural, were smaller in 2019 than in 2010. Those who remain worry that where small towns will catch a hard wind and blow away. About 78% of the population of Texas lives in the urban triangle between Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio. And six out of the 10 counties in the United States with the largest population gains in the decades were in Texas. Texas Monthly, Paula Burka, described modern Texas as an urban state with a rural soul. Suburbanization. The most significant demographic change in Texas has been suburbanization, a process in which population shifts from urban to rural areas to suburban areas adjacent to major cities. While the smaller metro cities have lost population, the suburbans in the state swelled with new residents. Texas suburban counties made up four, four of the country's 10 fastest growing countries in 2018. Implications of population shifts. As the state's population has shifted from rural to urban to suburban centers as to politics so too has political power. State policy priorities follow growing populations and wealthier citizens. The institution of Texans, Texas government, the legislature, the bureaucracy, the courts tend to address urban and suburban problems and focus on less rural issues. As the population rises in the cities and suburbs, so do their numbers of representatives in the Texas State Legislature. Consequently, greater resources and funding are streaming to these areas as state legislators bring projects and funds back to their back to their electoral districts in the form of newer schools, highways, highway funds, and other infrastructure projects. In addition, as like-minded individuals have settled into neatly urban and suburban pockets, political divisions have begun to develop between the conservative suburbs and more liberal urban areas. This is the end of part one.